Hello there, and thank you so much for checking out this bullet journal video. The month of May is approaching, and this time my theme is inspired by Morocco. So if you don't know, I'm trying to theme my whole journal this year. Each spread is based around a different country, and yeah, this time it is Morocco in the north of Africa. I've wanted to do a setup based around this country for a while now because I've got this perfect washi tape set that fits the theme, but I actually found this design quite tricky to come up with. It's really frustrating when you have some vague ideas and you know what kind of a vibe you want to create, but you just can't translate that onto paper. It took a while, but I did get there in the end. So this front cover is based on architecture typically seen in Morocco, and I'm using this slightly reddish brown watercolour to represent the warm tone of the plaster or the stone used to build the walls. Using watercolour is always a bit tricky in these types of journals because the paper isn't really suited to it. It really soaks in and often leaves a bit of a streaky and uneven finish, but in this case I kind of wanted that to give the wall a bit of a texture. So as you can see I've created this doorway shape, I'm leaving some areas unpainted and I just decided to go in and try adding a little bit more texture and shading by stippling on some more concentrated paint. I'm not sure it was that successful, but it's fine. I don't think I ruined it or anything. I also left a border around the door unpainted as that is where some embellishment will be added later. Within that border, I have added a repetitive pattern with a very thin brush, just doing little leaf shapes between all of the dots on the paper. I wanted it to look like carving into stone rather than a painted element, so I just used exactly the same colour paint to do the pattern, and because it's watercolour, that comes out a little bit darker because it's a second layer. If it was something more opaque like an acrylic, you would likely need to mix a slightly different colour for it to be visible. It looks a bit complicated, but it really didn't take that long, and once that area was all filled in, I used some washi tape to do the border. I have a few different washies with different tile patterns that are really commonly seen in Morocco and other Islamic countries like Tunisia and Turkey, and yeah, I think it looks really cool. So another thing Morocco is well known for is lanterns. It's a predominantly Islamic country, and lanterns are traditionally used to decorate streets and homes during Ramadan. At the time I was filming this, Ramadan is ongoing, and I think will be coming to an end about the time I'm posting this video, and then Eid celebrations will take place. So either side of the doorway, I added these hanging lanterns, which I think turned out looking really nice, and added a bit of a magical feel. I used a 0.1 nib fine line pen to get the outline really neat and detailed, and then used some red and yellow watercolour to give them a warm glow, which I think complemented the wall tone quite well, and that's good because I wasn't quite sure about the colour to start with. I would love to visit Morocco one day, it's such an interesting country. The architecture is such a draw for me, so many beautiful towns and buildings to explore. Marrakesh is a very popular town for tourism. You can see markets, palaces, mosques and gardens. Apparently it's actually known as the Red City because of the red clay used in many of the buildings, which is the vibe I was going for with my front cover. Although it's probably the most well-known city, Rabat is actually the capital and is home to the Moroccan royal family. So after adding the title with my brush pen, I am cutting out the doorway with a craft knife and I'll be painting in a little scene behind that page to show through. So I'm starting off painting the whole page with this bluish grey colour as this will be a night sky. Again, it is quite difficult with watercolour on this paper because if it gets too wet, it will bleed through to the other side. I could have used watercolour paper, but that probably would have been a bit too sensible for my liking. But also some of the scene further down is quite detailed and it can be a bit tricky to get that with a pen on textured paper. So at the bottom of the page I'm creating my little scene and I'm using some black paint mixed quite thickly to create some sand dunes and then also some palm tree trunks. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just using the tip of the paintbrush to give the tree trunks a little bit of an uneven edge. Then I am going in with the fine line pen again to draw a row of three distant camel silhouettes and then also adding the palm leaves to the trunks. There is a large area of desert in Morocco and I would really love to see that kind of scenery. It's nothing I've ever experienced before just to see such a huge expanse of sand and in such a hot climate as well I think would be really interesting. I really like this little scene, it's got a real magical Arabian Nights vibe to it. Once I was happy with my silhouettes, I used a white jelly roll pen to add in some stars. I found the trick with stars is to do clusters of little dots and then leave gaps between them because if you do an even spread over the whole sky, it just ends up looking like snow. Then I added a crescent moon to add a little more interest to the scene. And also it's an important symbol in Islam, which is a, another good reason to have it in there with this theme. So next is the calendar page, and I changed it up from my usual two page spread this time and made it a lot smaller. You'll see why when I make the next page. But because the boxes were quite small, I added a box above the calendar to write in all my important dates that I need to remember. For some reason, I didn't write the important dates title centrally as I had it planned out on the page, and I think it just ended up looking a bit weird, unfortunately. I have to say, this is not my favourite page from the spread. I think it looks a little random, and like, I didn't really know what to do with it, but hey-ho. I added in my lanterns, as I did on the front page, and I apologise that my camera progressively loses focus there, but uh, you can still see that I added in the May title, which I wasn't sure if I should or not, but then it needed something at the top there rather than just a blank space. The next page is for my to-do list and I've made another doorway shape. I'm using a rich gold paint this time to do the outline. These Calera paints are so good, they are the best metallic watercolours I've used and I did an unboxing and test video about them a little while back so you can check that video out if you're interested. I added my title with a Food No Safety brush pen. Then, because it's a to-do list, I added these checklist sticker boxes. These have been kindly sent to me by Create with Kate, who is a fellow YouTube bullet journaler and runs a small business creating these really handy journaling supplies. She comes up with loads of really cool and innovative spreads for bullet journals, so I would really recommend checking out her channel and also her shop, so I will add the link to that in the description. Okay, so now I'm cutting out the door shape, and when it's flipped over onto the calendar page, it will only show the lanterns and then cover up the rest of it. So that's kind of the driving force behind the layout of the calendar page, which I think kind of restricted it a bit, and maybe that's why it ended up looking a bit weird. But I do really like how the door shape turned out with the gold edging, I think it's very cool. So I then do that on the other side as well, painted the gold outline again, and it will be the gratitude page. So after I added my title, I just put the dates of the month down one side and then I will try and add something each day that I am grateful for. Up next is a quote page and I've used this one by Roald Dahl. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And I feel like this theme has quite a magical quality to it so it seems like a good fit. I think it's a good positive reminder that in life you will find what you go looking for. So if you look for positivity and magic, you will find it. 
but if you are negative and always looking for the bad stuff, you will find that too. I used a 0.5 nib fine line pen this time as I wanted the text to be quite bold. I really love hand lettering, but I find it so difficult to arrange words and decide on fonts. I think this one ended up quite well balanced because I was able to space everything out nicely and there's a symmetry to the fonts with capitals at the top and bottom, then the next one in is lowercase. Then although Believe and Magic are different, they carry the same weight, if that makes sense. I actually do go over the word magic with a brush pen later to make it a bit darker and match up with the word believe a bit better. So to decorate this page, I wanted to use a big area of the washi tape to look like a tiled wall. And then also when the previous page is flipped back, it will have the tiles behind the gold edge door shape, which I think will look really cool. So I started to use this tape and it was going okay but I actually really didn't like how it looked in a huge block so I then decided to take it all off and change to a different one. It did take a while but I think this blue tape looks a lot nicer in a larger area. When I finished that, I decided to paint in a few more stars and moons to make it a bit more magical. And as I mentioned before, the crescent moon is an important symbol in Islam and so are five point stars because the five points of each star are supposed to represent the five pillars of Islam. So onto the trackers and habits page and it's my old classic again so I'm not going to spend too much time on this page as it's pretty much the same every time. It's still working for me and I haven't got bored of it yet so just keeping my usual plant watering and yoga trackers there. I've got my habits to the right and it's made super easy for me this month because I have these habit tracker stickers which were also included in the great stuff that Create with Kate sent to me. It literally took me a minute to stick these all in and they are all super neat. So thank you so much Caitlin! She also sent me some other really pretty stickers and washies which I've used for a different setup and I will upload that one on my channel soon. Morocco also has some very well-known foods, so couscous is traditionally from Morocco, tagine is something that's also really famous there. It's cooked in a ceramic cone-shaped pot and there's lots of different spices that go into it so it's very flavourful. And also Moroccan mint tea is very famous, it's supposedly very refreshing in their hot climate. I have never tried it but it sounds delightful. To decorate the page, I am adding the washi down the sides, and I do really like this tape. I think it just didn't look great in a huge chunk, so it's much better just in one strip like this. Then I just added in some lanterns in the spaces that were left. So finally, onto the weekly spreads, and I don't want to make this one too complex because I spent a fair amount of time on the rest of the spreads. So I'm using some more of that washi tape to create a tiled border all the way around the page and down the centre.
Each page is split into a grid of nine squares. Because I only need seven, I'm just adding in some decoration to two of the boxes. And this is just like my go-to spread when I need to just get it done a bit quicker or I don't have any great ideas for the layout. It just works really nicely for me. Once I had done all my weekly setups, I added a memory section on the last page as I didn't have space for it earlier. And there are only three days left at the end of this month, so that fit in perfectly there. Once it was all finished, I actually decided to do some alterations to the calendar page. I sorted out the important dates title just by covering it up with a neater one and I added in a few more lanterns and I think it improved the overall look of the page quite a lot. So this setup ended up being a bit more work than I had planned for but I do really like how it turned out. I do really love how the front page turned out. I'm slightly less in love with the calendar page but I think it's okay overall. And my doorway cutout halfway through the spread I think looks really cool, adds a little bit something different in there. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please feel free to leave a like and a comment. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!